in the textbook on, on page 316 to 314 um, on um, the Pequeno Hotel and Beach Resort, we want you to summarize the issues that are important in the management of the mine, especially in this type of business, which is basically the hospitality industry. Um, what are the kind of issues that is important for service providers to deal with when they are trying to manage um, their demand, which we know is fluctuating, especially um, in cases like this where um, it's, it's a seasonal business or it's it's more popular in certain during certain seasons of the year. I'm not exactly sure on what page it is, but I can give you a hint. I think let's try try page 299 and see if you can find something of importance there that's related to certain principal outcomes. Okay, no problem, sir. Um, I'll give you the four, and then you uh, apply them to the case study for me. Okay. Right. Four of the um, principal outcomes is that you have to attempt to manage the following. When there's an excess demand, in other words, during those um, the, the summer, uh, um, during the summer season, when a beach resort like this is is is, is more popular, as the case study says. Um, the demand actually exceeds the, their capacity to deliver by 100% during those times. So how are we going to address the excess demand? How are we going to um, manage the situation where the, the demand exceeds our optimum capacity? So in other words, there's great demand, but um, and we can actually um, we can actually service everybody, but um, um we do not have the capacity our capacity to deliver is under a lot of strain and then thirdly we find a situation where the demand and supply is balanced um and then you have a situation where you have excess capacity in other words those winter periods where there's not too many customers but you still have the same capacity you haven't um broken down any of the rooms the, the hotel and all its facilities is still available, uh, like it would be any time of the year, but obviously there's not enough people interested in. How do you address those four specific components? Let's start with the first one, the excess of demand. In other words, you have 50 rooms in your hotel. Um, it's fully booked every day of the week, every evening of the week during the summertime. How do you manage that? Because it, it, it it exceeds um, its, its excess demand. What do you do with those people that you can't accommodate? Maybe you pro um, can you provide them with uh, like day services where they can come in just for the day. That sure. would be one. That would be one option. Um, is, is there something else that you maybe can offer them? Uh, the option to build new hotels is, an, is that an option? It probably is, but. Um, in this industry, it's, it's it's a sort of a last resort because um, if you build extra rooms and add um, uh, extend the facilities that you offer, um, it has to be something that you are not going to necessarily um, um, be left with empty during a slow period. In other words, instead, in, 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 um, it is definitely a solution. Maybe what they can do is they can, as I say, to complement the 
a suggestion of offering him a day visits um, is to maybe um, add a campsite, for instance. Yeah. Because there, basically, all you need to have is that you need to have um, um, that you need to focus on is to provide them with um, or um, change your electricity accessibility to the to that particular area. But no infrastructure apart from that is is necessary. Um, it also then will allow you to have your um, to separate your your um, your hotel guests from the um, from the day visitors because you have a, sort of a campsite area that's available. Um, obviously, there will be restricted use of facilities um, and, and and manage um, um, control the um, um, the access of the day visitors to ensure that the experience of the um, of the resort. Um, the full time um, um, or the um, said the, the hotel and beach resort um, residents that they are not um, compromised, that they're still getting what they pay for and they're not. Um, so, it, yes, there's definitely, it's definitely a possibility to do that. Yeah. Um, you can also maybe offer them um, different dates. Um, when somebody, um, when somebody, uh, phones in or inquires online for um, uh, about the availability, um, and they um, and they cannot be accommodated because the demand exceeds by far your capacity to deliver. Uh, maybe offer them um, different dates later on. Um, try and find um, um, a solution where maybe at a reduced fee you can offer them. Um, at a different time in the year that you can offer them a package to do um, to visit the facilities. Um, again, at this point, it will be wise to also share all the different um, additional functions that you can perform. You can maybe say, all right, so we sorry, we can't help you with this, but please keep us in mind if your business um, wants to um, wants to do a team building session or they want to host a conference um, or a workshop. Um, maybe if somebody in the family um, wants to get married and they look at a venue, those are all extra services that we do offer and that we can offer any time of the year. Okay, so again, that, that will be sort of offer them alternatives. Um, secondly, when the demand exceeds your um, optimum capacity, and that means that you um, that um, there are, there's more people that need the service, that require the service, um, than actually you can manage. Um, but it's possible to do that by maybe um, maybe hiring um, part-time um, part-time workers just to help your current staff um, because then you won't. Um, have them during the slower times of the year when there's um, when you're not operating at, at, at full capacity. Uh, you don't you're not stuck with them. Um, it's not that that becomes an, an unnecessary expense, uh, but it can definitely be, um, and it's probably one of the better ways to address um, to address this. Um, I think um, as you also suggested. Um, the extra staff can also be used um, in the day visitors um, area, for instance, um, to ensure that they are also getting um, um, the same service that they that they expect to get. Um, where the demand and supply is balanced, um, we're working at our maximum capacity. In other words, everybody is busy all the time. We um, have a full house, so to speak. Um, there's no room in the venue, but um, we actually are coping. Um, our current infrastructure um, and staff um, is sufficient to address it. We don't really have to change anything there. We just have to make sure that obviously the quality of the service that we offer is not neglected um, because um, that's the ideal situation where we find the balance between capacity and demand. Um, or supply and demand that we that we want to have. Um, if we provide that extra special service 
at this point where we can because the capacity and demand is equal it might result in people coming back other times of the year which is um, which is usually a slow time for you based on the experience that they've had. So this is an opportunity for you to promote your business through the service quality that you offer. When there's excess capacity, um, this is usually where we have to find ways of being very creative. And some of the aspects that Dave, in other words, um, what happens during the slower times? What happens during the winter months when it's it's the hotel and beach resort, um, when the weather is not that great, um, what do we do then? Yeah. Um, there, I think there you can offer like special package deals for like families to come during those times because prices would be lower. The rates will be lower, yes, um, and, and maybe that would be um, that. See, during those times, and, and what a lot of businesses. Or is about renovations can be done. It's also a time when you can do reservations, um, renovations, because and upgrades can be done because um, you're not um, 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 you're not operating at full capacity. Um, the um, opportunities that come with this um, is also to, like they've said in the case study, um, to try and add additional services that you offer, like the weddings, for instance, um, like conferences. Try and get people out there. Um, like the example I've used yesterday with the with the gyms that um, reached out to schools to say during our um, um, slow times or slow hours during the day, uh, which is just after the school um, school is out, um, we are offering special packages, reduced fees. You don't have to have a full membership. You only have access on certain days during those certain times. I know that. Um, when 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 Planet Fitness became a serious competitor with Virgin Active, um, that's what they offered. They offered um, at that stage it wasn't offered by by Virgin Active, but um, I think Virgin Active has since converted to offering that as well. And that is to say, um, student packages. Um, it's student packages, but it limits you your access to certain hours during the day. Students can go. Students want to go to a gym during the peak hours because of the social interaction. But students can't necessarily afford the six, seven, eight hundred rand monthly um, um, membership fee. So by offering them access to the facility between nine in the morning and four in the afternoon, which is normally um, it's a slower time. There are certain the lunchtime hour is very busy again, but they are slower. It allows you that option at an uh, um, extremely reduced rate to access that facility. Something similar to this could be offered as well during the slower periods, yes. Um, but, but that is usually the best option um, to, to accommodate um, those slow times, to try and get feet through the door and not to be greedy. You can be greedy during your peak seasons. Then you have to actually... Um, um, then you actually have to um, tr um, offer as much as you can and as many extras as you can um, because during those slow times, you must just break even. You must not operate at a loss. Uh, therefore, you don't have to necessarily be full every evening, um, weekdays and weekends. Um, but your first um, objective would be to say, Let's at least first try to be a, um, um, to actually be full every weekend. If we cannot achieve every weekend in our slower time um, or slower season, at least let's try then um, as a secondary measure um, to get um, people to come out and host conferences during the week. People don't want to be away for a conference on a the weekend. They want to be away from work during the week attending a conference. So that is a specific market that you can also then target like they have done. Okay, People are not going to have weddings on a Wednesday or a Thursday or a Tuesday. They're going to have weddings on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday. So again, the offerings that you have um, and that you, um, that you add um, to bring in extra business during those slower um, um, seasons um, need to... Um, can complement each other. They shouldn't be in competition with one another. Um, and yeah, um, 
get your weekends busy first. Uh, if that doesn't work out, um, add the weekdays to, to the specials too. Um, critically assess the methods used by um, Pequeno Hotel and Beach Resort to match the supply and demand. What have they done um, from the case study? What can you remember? What have they done to, um, to address this? Um, what we've just basically said, um, we've made some, you've, you've given us some suggestions. How many of those suggestions that you gave us um, from the case study have appeared um, to have been uh, applied by by um, Pequeno Town and Beach Resort? Hi, sorry, sir. I'm just looking for my earphones so I can connect. A lot of action in the background, huh? Yeah, got a state student house. <laughs> no, I can understand. Let's let's um block out the, the outside noise. Is you were saying, sir? Um, you've given some ideas, and I've given you some um ideas that um that they can use from the case study itself. Which I which of these ideas have they used? Have they taken? Which of these measures have they taken? They do um, product offering. Yep. For another resort in South Africa. That. Um, they did weddings Ooh. of the different services during right. the low peak seasons. Right, right. There's there's one um, distinct other one that um, that they definitely have been successful with that they also mentioned in the case study. Okay. Are they located? We are they located? Close to close to what specific um, place that will offer them this additional market? Are they located? Like the the geographic location? Yes. Uh, they are located in e the east eastern Cape Coast, so near the ocean. Okay, right near the ocean. And what do what? What are the cities close by, and what what do we find in those cities? Um, I saw it here. Not a geographical question. What's the capital city of the Eastern Cape? I want to say Port Elizabeth, but I'm not sure if it's correct. <laughs> Sorry, so you broke up. I didn't hear you. Firstly, it's not Port Elizabeth anymore, it's um, Quebecer, but anyway, um, regardless of what the new names are, it's not Port Elizabeth. Oh, so it is Port Elizabeth, okay, they changed the Port Elizabeth name to Turnbecker. Yes, but, it's not, but that's not the answer either. The answer is Bishu. Bishu. Bishu is um, it's about 30 kilometers inland from the coast, um, um, close to East London, which makes it very accessible to, um, to this particular resort. Is um, around about, yeah, just about um, 100 k's away north of East London. Oh, and Port Alfred. Yes. So what do we find in Bishu? Why, what would you normally find in the capital city of, um, of a province? Uh, a lot of people. Yep. 
A lot of people working for who? Uh, working for like the businesses in that area, I'm not quite sure. Who manages the province? The municipality? The yeah. government? Oh, Local government, provincial government, that's where you find the Eastern Cape um, Department of Education. Where are they located? Bishu. Where's the oh. school? Department of Sport and Recreation, Eastern Cape? Bishu. So what do those people do? What do they love to do and what do they often do? They, on holiday? <laughs> well, they're on holiday at, when they're at work, well, by, the, by the sound. <laughs> The sound of the testimonies in much of these court cases where where um where these high profile people are involved. Um now what they what we find is that because of the um presence of your local governments and provincial governments, they do a lot of training, they do a lot of workshops, they do a lot of oh, yes, yes, yes. so you can actually enter that market. That's the other thing that the the um, Queen Hotel and Beach Resort did. They decided to um, go into the conference market as well, because what people do at conferences is, I know that um, from previous experiences, when we hosted conferences um, for um, um, my previous college based in Stellenbosch, but they said to me, we would much rather you can do us two, you can do two quotes for me. And and that's and that 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 was my first sort of experience. I'm talking about 30 years ago. That was my first experience with interaction with with um, provincial um, government. I said to them, "Listen, you've got 20 students that you want to send on a course um, that we offer, and we offer that course in Stellenbosch, but we have the capacity to do that." Oh well, listen, this was before Teams and 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 Zoom and all these kind of things. Um, but we can actually offer you these programs. You've got two choices. One is you can bring the 20 people and um, the accompanying uh, management down to Stellenbosch for a week. Then you have to find accommodation in Stellenbosch. You still have to pay me who's going to offer the course to you um, and you have to eat every day. So all of these things, um, and obviously the transport getting from from East London to um, to, um, to Stellenbosch is also part of your package. That means that in excess of 20, closer to 25 people need to be accommodated in Stellenbosch and need to be fed every day and need to be transported here. Why don't I and one of my lecturers come to you for a week? Then the cost of accommodation um, and transport is so much less. And his answer to me was, but then it's not a conference or a course. We want to be away from home when we are. Um, and I can understand that because sometimes, um, obviously, your circumstances doesn't allow you to uh, or don't allow you to, um, to, to do something like that when you are at home. Um, and we, try, we eventually found an um, ideal medium um, between or balance between the two options. We I decided that um, the rollout of the program is a six-month rollout. We're going to meet for a week every month. In other words, it's six events. Um, and the first, the third, and the, and the fifth event I will be hosting. So you're traveling down to Stellenbosch. And then on the other three occasions, the second, the fourth, and the sixth occasion or month, um, I will come to you. Um, and then we balance the cost in that regard. But um, yes, very often when provincial government, um, uh, people don't see, uh, people don't want to work during the, um, people don't want to um, um, be in a conference the whole day in the city that they stay, because when that conference is finished for the day, they will go home. They want to be away from home when they have these conferences. And that makes such a venue like this ideal because you can actually break away. And part of a workshop or a conference like this is actually to, to have some breakaway time as well. So that's a very popular option, excuse me, that they um, that they can offer based on their location and what's available and the fact that they have the capacity to um, to um, to offer those services. I've also have two other um 
experiences I just want to share, and maybe um, yeah, you have one that you can think of as well. Um, when I did um, some marketing and recruitment for, for colleges in Namibia, I used to, um, and the only reason how I, how I got um, knows of this particular facility is when you visit a, a specific town for the first time, you don't know where to stay. Um, so I asked around some friends, and then um, one of my colleagues at work said, but you know what? One of our ex-students is a Namibian, and they are based in Swakopmund. Here's the contact details, um, and, and maybe phone them and contact them and say what would they recommend. What then happened is that I contacted the student, and the student has actually not followed a career in the field that they have um, studied with us. They actually have gone into hospitality, and the picture that you see there of the Atlantic Villa um, is basically um, taken while, when you take the person who took that photograph was probably standing with his ankles in the ocean. That's how close it is to the beach. Uh, and I know that because I've been there. Um, and and, and um, if you're any farther away, further away from that particular building, then you basically, um, you are swimming. Um, that was part of what I wanted when I, um, when, when the features that they offered was, was, was shared with me. I wanted a place that I um, have um, great internet speed and accessibility to internet um, because if you're away from home for a week or two, um, the comfort of, of, of what, your, what you offer or, or what your facility offers is important. I wanted to be close to the beach um, because um, then, it, then I can relax after uh, my day's work is finished. And I also needed some facilities that um, I could actually self-cater. Um, I don't want to, um, yes, most of these places have, um, have, have, have um, set menus and stuff like that and have um, dining room facilities um, as an option. Uh, I wanted to obviously have self-serving units and, and this was great. And I also wanted something that was not, um, that was that was obviously as I said, not for the reason of of going to the beach, um, but when you visit Namibia, you quickly um, familiarize yourself with the weather. Um, and Swakopmund being on the Namibian coast, um, basically um, on the edge of 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 the Namibian desert, you um, are going to hit sandstorms. So I wanted a place that faces the ocean because when you experience sandstorms, it comes from the dunes that's inland and not from the sea. Um, and that was, I woke up one morning and, um, and it, was, it was a Saturday morning, it was one of my off days between two weeks of, of spending time there. And it was so dark that I thought, okay, right, there's this, this electricity problem or something. And I looked outside and was right in the middle of a sandstorm. It was 11 o'clock in the morning and it was, dark as if it was in the middle of the night um, and yeah that's the kind of thing that you want to avoid um, so that's why I chose that particular venue and they also had a specific special on that if I book and pay by a certain date and all um, and, and then for me it worked out perfectly because Namibia don't have four school terms like we have they have three so when our students, um, when, when, when our um, um, learners um, in school are, um, are busy with their, second, um, with their second term, this is usually when these students are on holiday. So the time worked out perfectly for me because um, it was an out-of-season um, package that was offered, and that usually comes at a reduced fee. I usually went there um, the last two weeks of May, around about this time that we find ourselves in now. And that's why I, I um, experienced um, or was offered those specials. And all of these things added up. Um, but again, the facilities, very important to me, and the fact that obviously it was not full to the um, capacity um, um, and you will always find easy parking um, in front of your facility um, because it's, it's, not, it's not occupied to full capacity. That was that was one of the experiences I've had in this particular industry specifically, uh, where 
the owner of the business we obviously sat down we spoke about these things um how they have marketed their facility to ensure that it is available um, um 24 7 and is available 365 days a year the other benefit that they have is that um when people think of Namibia, they think, okay, right, we're going to fly Cape Town, Vintuk, we're going to fly Johannesburg, Vintuk, we're going to fly Durban via Johannesburg to Vintuk. Um, there's an airport just 30 k's outside of Swakopmund, um, and a, in, in, in the previously South, Africa, uh, South African town, Wolfish Bay. Wolfish Bay um, um, was part of South Africa um, until Namibia um, gained in um, independence um, in the in the 80s um, now they have an international airport as well so I could fly directly from Cape Town to Wolfish Bay um, and what this also means for a business like this is that if you if you have a beach house in South Africa and you have a beach house um, let's say any up the west coast further than Langebaan, um, or you're on the on the south coast maybe further than um, Hermanis, you can actually also visit Swakopmund for a weekend being in South Africa as a breakaway because the airport is 30 k's outside of Swakopmund um, the flight is is an hour so it takes you no flight is two hours so you if you leave Cape Town at 12 o'clock you'll be there um, say half past two three o'clock in the afternoon which you'll also be when you um, um live in cape town and you go up the west coast past langaban or you go on the south coast past amonis so time is not the issue and flights is not the issue so that made that particular venue very popular um, and i often found when i was there that on weekends it was obviously busier there were a lot of south africans there who were actually taking a break away which is amazing. It's also a facility that um, some very well-known celebrities who have previously been linked um, significantly with Namibia um, have have visited. Um, Oscar-winning actors and actresses. Um, so it's, it's it's become a popular destination. Um, and yeah, it was just through clever um, management of your different um, seasons. Um, to ensure that you always operate at max capacity, um, but could accommodate um, a variety of people as well. Um, another example that um, I, I enjoy the the garden route. Um, I enjoy it's it's three hours drive away from Cape Town. If you go to George, Mossel Bay, any of these areas, I quite enjoy the southeastern Cape Coast. And this morning on the way in dropping my son off at school um there was a ad on the um, um a commercial on the radio that specifically were marketing the town of george now some people don't know where george is but george is basically three 330 kilometers away from cape town on the southeast coast very close to mossel bay about 50 k's from mossel bay and um and and a very popular destination so they have now as part of their campaign to market the town as a destination for people to visit during winter they have started this campaign it was this morning on the radio and it was specifically saying visit george in june because it's a great venue mountain biking trails close to oats horn you can go ride ostriches if you want to you can go to the beach because we've got that as well there's mountain biking trails so they were promoting their town as a holiday destination for people who are taking mid-year breaks because sometimes you've got to remember based on the wine farmers and the farmers in the western cape when do they go on holiday they don't go on holiday in december and january like the majority of us do that's when they need to harvest so especially the wine farmers that's harvest time you can't you can't leave the farm so when do they take their breaks they take their breaks in the holidays later on and that's one of the reasons why um i think 
um, this particular venue has, has started with this drive, and obviously because they have missed out on um, on full capacity during the previous summer as a result of the um, of the COVID restrictions of people not being able to go to beaches during um, that festive period. So a lot of people who would have considered going there didn't go there, so they didn't operate at full capacity, and now they want to make up. But also, it's um, it's a it's a very popular thing to do. Uh, and I thought it was a very appropriate to the topic that we've covered in this chapter. And that was just a perfect example of them promoting them their, their destination specifically as a mid-year, um, as a mid-year destination, which would normally have not been the case as a result of their location. Um, anything you want to add, Kia? Um, no, sir. Have you ever been disappointed um, wanting to go to a certain place at a certain time, but um, you were just like, I'm sorry, ma'am, we are fully booked. Uh, you, we can't offer you anything for the next three weeks. I mean, we're fully booked for the next three weeks. Kind of, have you had any experience like that? And you thought, but guys, don't you have a plan B? Um, not in terms of like, Booking places is more like the clubs we went to. Oh, you should plan better. You shouldn't leave it to the last minute or just make it a sort of a, um, a spontaneous decision. You must, yeah. plan, you must plan. But I know sometimes it happens. I mean, you didn't really plan on going out and then a um, few friends come over and um, one thing leads to another. And you think, oh my goodness, let's go out. I mean, we actually, we can have a good jaw. You know, sometimes a, a, a vibe like that sort of just, happens <laughs> you didn't plan it and then um yeah when when those kind of um spur of the moment decisions are taken then obviously you, we can often be disappointed because our service providers won't be able to accommodate us yeah thanks good example right yeah it was just me and you i've um done the recording so i'm going to upload it um and um we'll we're done for the day thank you very much um thank you, sir. I appreciate uh, to you that you um that you joined and um we can chat again next week um let me just go through my list i think there is a let me see um nothing at the moment i think there is very soon a another class test that's coming up but uh, i'll remind you of that um but no otherwise keep well enjoy the week in the head um, and we'll chat again on monday Thanks, sir. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.